Welcome to Lean to the Left, home of no-holds-barred commentary, plus interviews with fascinating people, some of them top experts, others simply with interesting stories to tell. You'll never know who will show up at Lean to the Left. Now here's your host, Bob Gaddy. There's a horrible, deadly cancer that not many people know about. It's called cholangiocarcinoma. We'll learn a lot about that today from Jan Meyer, who lost her mother to this disease and has been fighting Colangio herself for a long time. Jan's a retired registered nurse and was diagnosed with stage 4 2B intraheptic cholangiocarcinoma in February 2018. That's five years ago. She underwent a liver resection and then received chemotherapy for six months. She's doing well now, and she's spending her life helping to raise money and awareness for cholangiocarcinoma research. Now, on May 20, Jan and her husband, Dean, will hold their fourth annual 5K. <laughs> it's called the Quack Out, that's Quack Out, Q-U-A-C-K, Quack Out Cholangio 5K Run Walk to Crush bile duct cancer with all proceeds earmarked for research. Janice, welcome to Lean to the Left. Oh, thank you so much for having me today, Bob. I really appreciate you helping us raise awareness about this deadly aggressive rare cancer. Um, it originates in the bile duct, which is like this thin tube that's about four to five inches long. And yeah. it takes bile from the liver and moves it into the small intestine to help digest food. Okay. So it's Bef kind of like a difficult cancer to diagnose. It can take up to a year sometimes to diagnose. And then sadly at that point, it's diagnosed at a later stage and certainly has a very high recurrence rate with limited treatment options. Now, certainly that is changing. Thankfully, some great companies have come on board with some incredible new medication and drugs to help that but it still remains that it has a poor life expectancy. Jan, how do people suspect that they might have this? What are some of the symptoms? The symptoms can be quite vague and confusing because they often mimic symptoms from other diseases. Mm -hmm. So you can have chills or clay-colored stools, a darker urine, fatigue, itching, maybe a loss of appetite or a pain in your upper right quadrant where your liver is. Yellowing of your skin is another one, your eyeballs, and just some unexplained weight loss. Okay. If you experience some of those factors, what should you do? I would get to your doctor immediately and just keep pushing. And I always tell people, consider cholangio always. We recently put up billboards here in Delaware to help to say just that. With the symptoms, they're vague and they don't really point to anything specific. So consider cholangio always. The short form for cholangiocarcinoma is CCA. So we've played on those words, consider cholangio always. And certainly you need to get your liver function test done. You need to have an ultrasound at the very minimum, preferably a CAT scan and maybe even an MRI. But oh. the most important thing at that point is to get to a doctor that specializes in cholangio. And certainly that's where I think patients do very well if they recognize they need to get to somebody that specializes in this rare cancer. You know, when you only have a population of approximately 10,000, they think it's much higher. They suspect it's much higher than 10,000 per year. But when you only have that many in a population of the whole United States, you do sometimes have to seek out an expert, which can mean traveling quite a long distance. Now, certainly we had to leave Delaware because there wasn't an expert here in Delaware. So we went up to Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York City. Okay. What are some of the risk factors that uh, contribute to cholangio? Is it genetic? Because I know that your mom had it. It's, it. Genetic is actually considered to be a very low risk to get cholangiocarcinoma. It's usually some forms of liver diseases in the past, maybe uh -huh. some primary sclerosing, cholangitis, PSC, fatty livers, liver fluke infections, vets over in Vietnam. And over in Asia, eating contaminated fish and getting liver flukes, viral hepatitis, bile duct stones, 
cirrhosis and actually genetics plays a small role. Now there are some other signs, other things that can put you at risk like obesity, diabetes, aging, excessive alcohol use, and a family history is really just a slight increased risk, but sometimes like an irritable bowel syndrome or even smoking can increase your risk. But those are more minimal than certainly the others. Yeah. Okay. So in your own case, Jan, how has this affected you? First of all, maybe you could talk a little bit about when you first got it and what you did and how you've been coping because you're five years into this thing and you seem to be doing fine. Yeah. It is a difficult struggle. Some days I can put on a good face. In 2018, in 2017, it's really all this started. I decided I was going to have weight loss surgery. Dean was talking about when we were going to retire, when he was going to retire. And I thought, okay, now's the time. So I went through extensive medical testing for about six months including CAT scans of my abdomen, extensive lab work. And then I was on the operating room table to have the actual surgery. And the, thankfully, Dr. Peter is a surgeon. He flicked the camera up. He said, I just like to flick the camera up and look at the liver before I start. And he saw a shadow. So thankfully, he aborted that surgery, which probably saved my life. And he immediately biopsied it and we got the biopsy off and got that, got the definitive diagnosis. You always get those calls in the middle of the afternoon when no one's home. And you're like, is somebody there with you? Dean was at work. And so they said, you have cholangio. So it began this whirlwind of what are we going to do? Thankfully, my family doctor, Dr. David Malay, was really on top of it. And he said, Jan, don't worry. We're going to get you to a center of excellence. I had two appointments, one at Memorial Sloan Kettering. I went up there and Dr. Jarnigan's like, what would you like to do? And I said, I want this the, out of me. And he said, okay. And then he took it out and then six months of chemotherapy for mop-up chemotherapy and then just surveillance. So now it's at the scary point because I'm at five years. So insurance companies, et cetera, want you to go to six month scans. So I only have scans every six months. So that window in between, I've now started doing this new thing called Signatera testing, where they take a piece of your original tumor, they develop your own lab test, and then they check for circulating cancer in my blood every whenever I want to do it. So it's I use it as a safety net. There's some discussion whether or not it's it shows any kind of success in early detection for cholangiocarcinoma patients, but a few of us do it trying to prove it is or it isn't a good tool to have in our tool belt. So I just did it and it came back zero, which is fantastic. And I just had scans, my five-year scans. So it's unnerving because I get nervous almost right away after you have the scans that are clear, you think any ache, any pain, and certainly the side effects from chemotherapy are long lasting. I have still have hand. I still have terrible neuropathy in my feet, in my hands. I drop things all the time. I'm living, and so we try and make the best of it. And certainly, that's part of my inspiration to keep going is to raise more money for research and more awareness, so somebody else maybe gets to a center of excellence in, 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 in a more timely fashion. You, you're doing all this work to raise money. And I know it takes a hell of a lot because you do this annual, this is the fourth annual 5K, and you do other things besides that. I know that you and your husband have contributed a ton of money for research, and so you've been working to raise that some of that money. But you have other health challenges, don't you? Yeah, I had an accident about 15 years ago. I'm in a wheelchair permanently, so... That's just a small, I don't really talk about it too much. Like people, when they come to the race and meet me and we've communicated for months or a year and they're like, what happened? And I said, this isn't new to us. It's new to you, but you can downplay it. And certainly we hold charity wine tastings. We do meals at restaurants where they give you a part of the proceeds. And I was very fortunate. Like last year I was awarded the Mark R. Clements Award for Excellence in community advocacy and community impact. And it, it means a lot to you and you can 
I use those things to spearhead getting more money. And then this past December, I was honored to get the Delaware Governor's Outstanding Award for Volunteerism. And it does help. And then I, we decided, Dean and I decided, we were getting a lot of no's from sponsors for our 5K. And it was because we weren't officially a 501. And so we formed a 501 at the end of last year. And it is seeming to, it is helping a bit, get us a bit more money. And ultimately, when you meet all these warriors and you, they become family. And so you do it. I always think of it like I'm doing it for them because, you know, these yeah. young warriors that I've met that, I've had some good friends, very young in their 20s and 30s, who have passed away from this terrible cancer. And certainly it used to be a cancer of men, mostly over 65, but it's now being seen in much younger men and women, vets returning from Asia, 9-11 responders. It's sad to me that cancer patients and caregivers and those who have had somebody stolen from by cholangiocarcinoma are left to fill these gaps of insufficient federal funding for rare cancers. And it's a shame, I think, that patients just can't be patients. In our community, we're very fortunate. We get a huge amount of community support for our events, donations, and just support for volunteers. The Rotary Club's involved from Newark, and they were absolutely amazing. We have a young boys running club, the Let Me Run Club. They pick our races, the race they do every year. They're a lot of fun. They bring a youthful enthusiasm that some of us old people don't have at the race and we're honored that they come but the fact still remains that the government is historically the largest public investor in cancer research and play a critical role in our ability to promote new discoveries in a disease like cancer that's expected to take about 600,000 lives this year so many rare cancers are also grossly underfunded not just cholangiocarcinoma but they're grossly underfunded relative to the number of new cases, deaths, and the number of years lost in total. And federal funding has only stagnated when the cost of research has gone up. And so we, I try and say that on every opportunity I get, if I speak to somebody that I think could have some influence about that, because we definitely need to start funding cholangiocarcinoma research because JAMA predicts that by 2040, liver cancer and intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma will be the third leading cause of cancer death. So with drugs taking 10 plus years, even with accelerated approval, I always, my tagline is this is a crisis because it is. 2040 is going to be on us in no time. And I, I, I'm just hoping other families don't have to go through what we've gone through, what I've seen other families go through. That's incredible, Jan. I, it, to me, I just cannot understand how it is that you can have the energy, let alone the positive outlook that you have, how you can have the wherewithal to do all this work that you're doing to raise money for this research that's so badly needed. You're a very small cog in the wheel, though. Yeah, I know you are, but nevertheless, you are... It takes a ton of energy to do what you're doing. And yeah. Yeah, how do you do it? I don't understand. How do you do it? I, I take it as my full-time job. Yeah. I'm, we're fortunate that I don't work. And I probably couldn't work in the capacity of an RN. Now all this stuff, it was a steep learning curve to do fundraisers. I had never participated in anything like that. So all that stuff the first couple of years was pretty stressful. Now I've got it down to a fine art, although COVID kind of threw a wrench in February. I'm usually way far ahead as where I am, but we had a month off with COVID. We both had COVID, so that kind of knocked us down, but we're getting back on track. And certainly now I have a team of people that I don't really have to worry about the day of event. I have lead volunteers and the, the, all the volunteers come back, which is quite, it's quite an honor that they, I say, can you please come back? And they're like, Absolutely. And we make a fun event. We have we have food trucks, we have live music, because a, a young lawyer was um, here in Delaware, passed away from Colangio, Keith, and 
his friends that come and play on his behalf. For, and they're the be- some of the best musicians in the state. And then we just have a new 13.1 foot duck that we got last year. And everybody dresses like ducks or wears duck costumes. And it's a fun day. It goes, I equate it to a wedding though. You plan it for a whole year and then it's over like that. And you think, oh, that's all it was. But <laughs> it really is like a big wedding and everybody wants, everybody wants to talk to you and it's overwhelming and the warriors actually come in for the whole weekend they come in starting thursday before the race and then they stay through some of them stay through till tuesday so we do dinner at our house the night of the race all the warriors come to the house the next day we all go for brunch then we all come back to the house and pack up the virtual packs and we've got it now down to a fine art what we need to do do you have a big house no not that big now (laughs) No, no. Well, you have how to... many people? How many? How many people are you talking about having for dinner for that event? About thirty to forty this year. <laughs> who who does the cook? Don't party? tell me you do the cooking. No, no. We actually cater it. We do Thanksgiving dinner because we're so thankful, okay. and okay. the Warriors have requested it again this year. That time is so special at our house because there's not all the other people that are at the race participating. Okay. And it's a time for, I always say the caregivers, nobody thinks about the caregivers, but to be honest, for them, that it's a tough go. They, yeah. especially for men who are used to fixing all the problems and then their right. spouse right. gets something and you just can't fix it. Yeah. Well, our job as a man is to fix things. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and it is I tough, was... and I saw it take a toll on Dean, and it was tough. But now he's on the board of the Calangio Carcinoma Foundation, and we're very engaged, and we'll do anything for them. And we have a couple fundraisers after this coming up to locally, so we're excited. And we like to, we'll do. And somebody will say, "What about this for money?" And I'll be like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it because <laughs> I'm just determined to find, I just want to fund more research fellowship grants. And so our money, what we raise at the 5k and that happens on May 20th this year in Newark, Delaware, you can do it live or virtual. You can sign up at races, the letter, the number two run.com and just look for the quack out on May 20th. It's $30. We don't take a lot of that money out of the race. We pay for the bare minimum out of the race money and we donate the rest and we fund last year the people who started the race had lost a spouse that had been at a race the year before and so those two husbands now we're honoring those two warriors this year and the research fellowship grant is being named in their honor i want to make sure that people understand you are saying warriors not lawyers yeah, warriors. Sorry, my yeah. Canadian. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And we call them warriors because some people don't like that term. Some kind. Some people call themselves fighters. I say, uh, you name it, it's your cancer. You call it whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them gave give their tumors names. I just call it warrior. What's that? You're fighting for something. Right. You're fighting against it. Yeah. And it can be tough when you're first diagnosed. I tell people like go to the Calangio Carcinoma Foundation's website page, and that's curecca.org. Reach out to them and find, go to their find a specialist link. Make sure you go to a specialist that specializes in calangio carcinoma. Then get a second opinion because second opinions save lives. A good doctor will, worth his weight in salt will not be offended if you go for a second opinion when you have calangio carcinoma. The leading doctors actually encourage it. And then, well, why do you care if they'd be offended anyway? It's your cancer. That's true. Some people, <laughs> my mom probably would have been would have been worried about that. Younger yeah. people aren't as concerned about that. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah my to, mom would have. My mom would have too. Yeah. Yeah. My mom would have yeah. never. Yeah. She's all worried about what people thought about things. To what do you attribute your parents' success in dealing with this disease, Jen? I honestly think it was sheer luck and being on that operating room table and him seeing that shadow, because certainly when I was diagnosed and I went to New York city, he said, I can take it out, but there's one stipulation. You have to have an MRI, full MRI 
and it can't be anywhere else. You just have to have that lo one lone isolated tumor. So thankfully I did, it was 3.1 3 centimeters. So they took out five by seven of my liver. And then I, I fought it. They said, I'm going to lower your chemotherapy. Your feet are terrible. And I said, no, you're not. And then my oncologist would say, you need to send me a picture of your feet. I want to see what your feet look like. And we had a deal that if they broke, the skin broke. But I had blisters and they were beet red. And I said, no, because I had seen cholangiocarcinoma firsthand. So I knew that we had to fight it with everything we had. Wow. And we did. And I, I attribute it to, to having a great caregiver. I had somebody who was up in the middle of the night with me at one o'clock in the morning, like clockwork, throwing up for three hours on chemotherapy. And never a complaint. He always just felt bad that he couldn't help me. But he was a tough, you need a good caregiver. Like some of the patients I feel bad for, they don't have that kind of support system. Sure. And it really does, I think, affect how well you can do with this. And also, I think I'm just hard-headed. I get that spot. That's my Scottish in me. Like, you know, I'm not going to go down without a fight. So just keep fight. I just keep fighting. And then I started doing the fundraising and the awareness stuff. And it gave me a mission. Rather than not doing anything, it gave me something to get up in the morning to I get up and I start working on it right away, especially from January till the race. It's chaotic life at the Myers, but it's worth it. You had to learn a ton of stuff about social media and technology and all this kind of thing oh, in order yeah. to do what you do, right? Yeah. And the cool thing was we had this young kid working at our house when I was just diagnosed. And I said to him, so do you do this full time or you do something else? He goes, no, I'm in school full time for film. And I said, really? I said, you want a project? So he and I started making little mini movies with the Warriors and he comes to our race. We've been to his wedding. We're now honorary grandparents of his kid. <laughs> it's really created a wonderful circle. And I truly am blessed. Like some of the people that have come into our life after I've had Colangio and a local wine shop owner during COVID, we had so many outdoor events at his place at Frank's Wine, and he helped us raise a lot of money for cholangio carcinoma. Sometimes for three hours, we'd make it $1,500. That's a lot of money in that sure. short period of time. Yeah. Jan, how much did you raise last year with your run? Uh... raised just over 76000 So for a 5K, that's pretty good. So Was that like a record for you? Yeah, that's... we. It's slowly going up. It was 25 for the first year, but it was virtual because COVID had hit. The next year, we were just over 50-something thousand. So this year, we're hoping to be over 100. <laughs> How do you do a virtual race? I don't understand. How does that work? You can sign up for it. Then we send you your T-shirt, your medal, and your bib. And you can walk at your house at your discretion anytime. And then you can enter your... You can still enter your time. It's mostly... For me, I let the virtual part happen mostly because of the warriors, maybe, or the people that have Colangio across the United States, they can sign up. Some people in Canada sign up. This just gives them a way to participate because there's so few Colangio carcinoma fundraisers. This is probably the biggest walk, in-person walk. And we had just under 600 people, probably about 100 of those were virtual, so about 500 people. It was a lot of people on site, but... It was, and then all the people watching, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, and it's very appreciated by the community. And we we've had the support of friends and friends that have stepped up in big ways for that day. So I, I guess you probably have NBC comes out and cover it for you, right? Well, we've tried to get publicity for it, and it's not the easiest yeah. thing, unfortunately. Yeah. This was the first year I managed, to, I've written the Eagles every year, and this was the first year we got their solar panels lit green for World Cholangio Carcinoma Day. Certainly back five years ago, I started getting proclamations for Delaware. I got, did the proclamation to declare even, like that had never been done before. That's how, mm -hmm. you know, it's this rare cancer that nobody knows about. So now, luckily, I have been on CBS once, and I've been on a few stations. I, I'm fortunate, the local radio guy here, he's kind of 
he reached out to me and he adopted uh, Colangio and he comes and be our MC at the race and certainly a local magazine in cool. Greenville. They've been very kind and done lots of articles about Colangio. Some days I open the magazine and I think, oh, Colangio again. I'm sure the neighbors are just thrilled. <laughs> Do what you can, and we moved into a new neighborhood just in August, and I sent a note out to the whole neighborhood to say, hey, I'm sorry, it's Colangio month, I have this deadly cancer, and because we had flamingos all over the front lawn, green ones, <laughs> with a big sign that says, what the flock is bile duct cancer, <laughs> and then all these ribbons, and then you're, and then these green lights, and you're thinking, these neighbors are going to love us. But I'm telling you, the outpouring, they were so kind and the outpouring of love. They put checks in the mailbox. And I was like, who are these people? They've been so supportive and kind but and tolerant. But we took them down, trust me. The second it was... Why, why do you call it quack out? Why do you use a duck? We use the duck because there's a warrior out on the West Coast named Mindy. And Mindy had a duck. And she started calling it her bile duck. And so just a clever play on words. And now our whole community <laughs> kind of embraced the duck. So oh, I, I, cool. I credit, I think it's quite clever, really. You sent me these little ducks and I didn't know really <laughs> what the origin of them was. Yeah, but and now I this, understand. This, is this year's. Oh, let's see it. Come on. All right. That's good. Yeah, there <laughs> that, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. So cool. we give those out and they're kind of, every year we have them custom made. So we're trying to make them like a trend that everybody wants the latest bile duck. So this is bile duck number three or four. Yeah, three. And so everybody's signing up just to get their bile duck, to be honest. Oh, okay. So let's talk on your 5K coming up. Again, the date is May twenty. It's in Newark, Delaware. Yep, Newark, Delaware at Midnight Oil Brewing Company. They've been an excellent partner with us and super supportive of us having the race there. We get great sponsorship. Insight, once again, Insight's one of the main people that have been with us since the beginning. They've sponsored our 5K. So they're the main cancer quacker. And then we have um, we have the Servier and we also have oncology came on board this year but we have like champion trophies Calangio now is hitting and affecting more and more people and so champion trophies here locally sponsor and give us a big discount on our medals and we get really nice medals respond as a result but they do that because they honor his friend Bill Hayes who was stolen by Calangio oh. and then their insurance company Nationwide Insurance, they sponsor it every year. Kirk and Roof this year, they were putting on our roof and they said they would sponsor it. And, you know, we're very fortunate that hers, Wawa, we how much does, kicker hitters. How, how much does it take to sponsor, to be a sponsor? We do various sponsorship levels, anywhere from 250 to 20,000. Okay. Yeah. So we've done sponsorship for, 250 but we only do one at 20,000 and then we cap we only let one person do it at that level and then the rest 10,000 and down we're hoping to get more sponsors I certainly send out I sent out about 400 letters that I type out myself and print and send and then you have to get all the prizes for the people that are in the race so we're very fortunate a lot of the local businesses come on board and give us gift cards and some of the chains give us gift cards. So then that's our prizes. So at least we don't have to put take that out of pocket or out of the race. That's very good. So how can people get involved? Not, we're, we're still looking for a few volunteers, but otherwise you can you could email me at Team Cure Calangio, T-E-A-M-C-U-R-E, Calangio, C-H-O-L-A-N-G-I-O, at gmail.com. And certainly you can sign up at race the number two run.com and it's $30 for virtual and 25 in person and anybody coming in person we give you a voucher and you get your meal free so we have a you get a free beer if you're over 21 from the brewery we give you a free lunch we try to keep people on site so they can learn more and maybe meet some warriors and stay connected with the 
community. What about finding a place to stay? We have actually, if you go to our web- website for the race, we have, we negotiate discounted hotel rooms. So we have two hotels on the website. Once they fill up, we can ask them for more rooms. And we actually get, we had 26 states participating last year. And we had people come from Texas, Chicago. People come from Michigan. They come from a long distance because it's such a rare thing to be able to have that kind of community. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I just think if you do have cholangial carcinoma or you get diagnosed, it's overwhelming. It's really scary. If you're not scared, you should be. And that should motivate you to go to curacca.org, get a mentor, request a mentor. They'll help you guide you through all the craziness that happens when you're first diagnosed. Find a specialist on the map, get a second opinion, make sure you get mutation testing. That's critical with our cancer because it opens up a whole new world of treatments for you. And just find older warriors. You can find them on social media, on Facebook, and you find them there and they can give you some hope. Certainly, I found hope from people that had the cancer long before me, and many of them are still here. So people are living longer with cholangio, and that's the best part. It's hope. We always say that donations equals research and research equals new treatment options and new treatment options equals hope. Janice, you mentioned a little while ago the Colangio Carcinoma Foundation. That's a partner of yours, right? Yeah, actually, we don't, we kind of volunteer for them. Dean's on the board with them and we kind of are separate We have Team Cure Colangio, and our mission is to fully, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Those Mm. people are incredible. They have it down to a fine art, what you need to do. There's a yearly conference. Physicians respect that charity. All the patients respect that charity. So all we did in forming our 501 was just in order to give them more money to facilitate more research. Okay. So we only raise money for research, though. We okay. kind of stipulate that. We feel that research is so key. that So we any money we get, we when we give it to them, it has to go to research. So they fully support what you're doing, right? Oh, yeah. They're amazing. Yeah, they're amazing. Like, they're, I think they think I have some wacky ideas because we just sent a thousand, just under 900 ducks all over the United States in boxes to people for them to hide. And then they had a QR code on the bottom of them. And then you could you scan the QR code and you could find out about cholangiocarcinoma. I think out of the box, and I think some people like it. Some people are like confused by it, but I don't know. I like thinking out of the box. I think it's you a should, have, should have been in marketing. You do a great job. <laughs> oh, I know. That's what Dean says. Dean's like, why were you a nurse? And I'm like, well, I kind of like nursing, but... <laughs> yeah, but you told me you didn't like blood, so that's... <laughs> yeah, no, not so much. I worked in radiology the last couple of years of my career. Oh. I really enjoy radiology. And there's something really special about being in healthcare. You get to meet patients that they're most vulnerable and when they're so open and, I don't know, you get to see families and get to know them in such a special way. I really, and that was a really a special time for me. I lifeguarded all my school years and then I went into nursing and I don't really know anything else. So now I guess marketing. But. Well, you've learned a lot about marketing because I've seen the results. Yeah. <laughs> the shirt is one of them. Uh, yeah, we love that shirt. So I'm because on the very front proud of this shirt. <laughs> all the names on the front are warriors that were currently fighting at the time of the race. And then on the back are all the warriors in the cancer ribbon that had been stolen by Colangio. I say stolen because that's what happens. It takes people way before their time, way before they ever should be, because it's such a aggressive cancer that has a really high recurrence rate. And it is I don't take I don't take it for granted that I'm still here and I think that's why I keep focusing on doing more because I can I'm and we have a deal though Dean and I that if I was to have a recurrence which could happen I don't ever dispute that it could that I have to stop doing all this immediately all this would stop there would be no more until I and I have to focus on my health but until then <laughs> we keep going and we keep raising money and we just did an event for Delaware, did a fundraiser for the state 
in 24 hours, the state, it's a crazy amount of money, $2.5 million they raised for all the charities in Delaware. Wow. In 24 wow. hours. Wow. And so wow. when I signed up, the fella said, I don't know if you're going to get much money. You're signing up late to the game, but I hadn't heard of it before. And we made 1500 So I was pretty yeah. happy with that. Like sure. for, we placed 100 out of 333 charities, small charities. So I was like, for the first time, but next year we're going for more. <laughs> next 15, year we're going to get all the bonuses. Oh, it's 1500 you wouldn't have had otherwise. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, Jan. Listen, until the next time, I appreciate you coming on with us. I really appreciate when people take the time to learn. You could save a life. You could get somebody who has some vague symptom, maybe think, oh, I should consider cholangio, and then they push it. With The problem is when you get these symptoms, you really have to push and advocate for yourself. I don't know very many patients who don't. And so getting this out into the public is so critical right now, especially if you, early detection isn't possible because there's no detection tool. So it's basically once you get it, then, you know, you hopefully you find it incidentally, which certainly is what I feel was the benefit yeah. for me incidentally yeah. finding it. Okay. All right, Jan. Thank you so much. Thank appreciate you very it. much, Bob. I appreciate okay. you. I hope you enjoyed this Lean to the Left video and that you learned something as well. Please come back on a regular basis and check out our interviews with guests on topics that I hope you find interesting, entertaining, and enlightening. And you can check out the schedule of upcoming shows, guests, and topics at podcast.leantotheleft.net. You can also subscribe to our audio version there or to our video shows here at YouTube. And follow us on social media. Facebook at the Lean to the Left podcast, Twitter at Lean to the Left One, Instagram at Bob Gaddy underscore Lean to the Left, and TikTok at, at Lean to the Left. Our goal is to be informative and entertaining as we and our guests comment on the latest developments in the news and about the social issues that concern us all. This is Bob Gaddy signing off for Lean to the Left. Thanks for sharing your time with us.